Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Kerbal Space Program in 2019. Yes, we have a lot in store for us and not just in Kerbal Space Program, although we'll have updates to the game which I'm not entirely sure what they'll be. What we can also look forward to is some real space missions and we've already started. If you haven't heard the news, we've had Osiris Rex which has completed its first uh, close approach to the uh, small asteroid which looks like a little rubble pile and is also start going to get into an orbit oh and by the way what we're doing in this mission is we're going to do a moon landing or a man landing whichever you want to call it I have people complaining to me that I'm call it man even though I'm saying man it's probably something to do with my Welsh accent but anyway, back to the news. Yes, not only have we got Osiris Rex, this slips into a close orbit of its asteroid, which is really difficult, by the way, because it's extremely low gravity. We've also had the New Horizons flyby, and this was extremely fast flyby, of, um, what was it called? Ultima Thule is the name they've given it. I'm not sure what the actual name is called, but it's been nicknamed the Snowman. Now, if you've seen the pictures that new the New Horizons team have posted, yes, it does look like a snowman. In fact, it is two asteroids which are sort of like clumped together due to gravity and created. You can clearly see the shapes. Now, the images they've shown are low resolution. That's because it takes ages to transfer the high resolution data from the probe. Don't forget, the probe is about 6.5 billion kilometers away from Earth, so that is a really long distance, and it has a really small transmitter, so we have to pick that up, and then you have errors which you have to correct, so using the special error corrections and everything, it does take a long time to download the images. It's not like you're uh, super fast broadband, or even if, you're, even if you have super slow broadband, it's not even that fast, so... Yes, we'll have to wait for them. I'm looking forward to them to see what they discover out there. Because it clearly looks like there's some craters on there. So, obviously they've had impacts. But it'd be interesting to know how the early solar system had formed from all these rocks. Which are still ev evidently out there in orbit around the sun. So, that is two space missions. But there is another. And this one's by China. They've landed the only... Yes, the only. They're the first ones who have landed on the further side of the moon. And most people call that the dark side of the moon. And that's not really true because the moon goes around the Earth. And the same side keeps on pointing the same at the Earth because it's tightly locked. So that means that the other side of the moon has to get illuminated by the sun at some point. And at the moment, the rover... I don't think it's a rover, in fact. I can't remember. I think it's just a space probe, a lander. No, actually, correction. I think it's a lander and a small rover combination. So, yes, they've successfully landed on the other side of the moon, which no other people, no other uh, state has ever done so. Not even Americans. And it's difficult because what they've had to do is put another satellite in a Lagrange point around the moon so that it can stay in communication with the space probe and then transmit to Earth. Otherwise, you know, there's no direct line of sight and they've got no communication probes, I think, in orbit around the moon at the moment. I could be wrong at that point. Though I do know that they've sent a couple of science orbiters around the moon. And lastly, which happened uh, today, or yeah, on the 3rd of January, which I'm now recording this commentary, they've rolled out the Falcon 9, which has the crew capsule, Dragon crew capsule, ready for testing on the launch pad. So that's quite exciting because they're hoping to pass these tests and then eventually they'll be able to launch this in around June, July, I think they're aiming for, with a crew on it. And this is a pivotal moment because ever since they cancelled the space shuttle program, the NASA have not had any way of sending crew up to the space station without the Russians' help. So we're no lot they'll no longer be dependent on the Russians at that point. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes right and we get the crew capsule with the SpaceX Falcon 9 rolling out then. So I believe that's mostly everything that I can think of the Space News at the moment, or at least the most relevant ones which I'm enjoying. 
So let's now go on to KSP and the updates I would really love for this year. One, one update. If it's only possible, please, multiplayer. That would be absolutely awesome because then you'll be able to build space stations with each other. However, if ever you've ever played some of the multiplayer mods that are out there, like Dark Multiplayer, you know problems can ensue. So, if they do this, they'd have to be happy with it themselves, squad I'm on about, and then before we'd ever see it. And they probably have to have limitations, like perhaps you can only have five people in the server at the time, they'd have to work a way around the warp, uh, time warp problem, or sort of like add something where perhaps you can only launch around curb in ore. In other words, if they're going to bring multiplayer, it is going to be really hard for them to work out because of the way the game runs at the moment. I'm sure there is a way around it, but that will come in the future. But other th mods, and not mods, other updates they could come up with. Adding parts to the game, come on squad, parts that have been in NASA since the beginning of the space program. In other words, guidance systems, perhaps you know a simple guidance system just for you to launch up into orbit, or perhaps a full computerized guidance system like MechCheb. Now I've used MechCheb a lot, and that's just because flying spacecraft is hard. They could also one thing I would really love in this game is if they introduce a computer uh, control system for the game, perhaps they can add it so you can set a maneuver node somewhere and that computer will do that maneuver node automatically while you're controlling another spacecraft. Because sometimes I've had the problem where I'm controlling one craft and then a maneuver node comes up saying I have to go and control this other craft at the same time and it's not doable so something like that would be absolutely awesome and also squad why not introduce parts that SpaceX use like the landing struts or I know people have made SpaceX crafts but why not introduce the SpaceX parts like you did when you done the Astro Redirect mission, which NASA is still planning, by the way, and hopefully they'll actually do it someday. But yes, add the SpaceX parts. At least, please, some new content for us. But I'm not taking away with one what they've been adding. Now, if you look at the game, they haven't seemed to added, have added much. But if you look at the animations of the characters, they've added extra animations. They look more alive. I enjoy the spacesuits. I didn't really like them at the first, but now I've played the game a bit, the new version a bit more. The spacesuits look nice, clean, and I really like them. The animations of the characters, yes, makes them more, look more alive, more energetic. Even the edited parts they've added, or not the added, the parts they've edited and reskinned and everything, I think they're really cool. And the new functionality where you can build a rover with the uh, one of the lander cans, I think it was. But yes, I've liked the what they've added to the game. Oh, and also, I especially love the way they've added Delta V to the game now. Having those stats was really, really needed, although I still will use, will use Kerbal Engineer Redux mod. And also, not to take away from things they've done under the hood, they've done a lot of coding where now they fix things like Shadow Zone had a problem where he had a huge project and he had to add a part in the uh, vehicle assemblies building. And when he did, it took a minute before that part I was actually added. In this version, which is on playing now, is 1.6.0, he didn't have that problem. And while I was playing this, normally my computer would slowly and eventually lag down. Frame rate, rate would drop, not to a point where I couldn't play the game, but to a point where I was wished I had a more powerful computer. Even though my computer clearly should be able to run this game, and it does. It's just that the FPS would never reach 60 FPS per second. I mean frames per second. But yes, even a large craft, I would have the, F the frames per second drop down to about 15 or even 10 when I had multiple craft in the game. 
So with this new optimized code for Caspi, I think I'll be able to do a lot more in what I'm planning on doing. Now I'm planning on doing a sort of like, uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's sort of more like a filmish sort of thing. Hopefully it'll be a bit, a bit more fun. I still have to work out the script a bit, but hey, look forward to that. That also brings me to the point where on the new content, perhaps what I'll be doing is some simple stuff. If you want me to keep on doing uh, SSTO builds, let me know. I'll get onto that and perhaps I'll even do a tutorial on how to build an SSTO at some point once I'm a bit more confident with it. But also, if you want me to do rocket missions, rocket SST, um, rocket tutorials, not SSTOs, but rocket tutorials, perhaps how to get to the moon or land on the moon or to another planet or moho, just let me know. Because while I'm doing this new project that I just mentioned, I'm going to be doing smaller missions. So as we leave Jev with his worried expression on his face, I'm going to let you know that, uh, trust me, I'm an engineer of rockets and stuff.